The E46 BMW M3 was one of the great sports sedans of its time, but 20 years later, does it still have it? Let's go find out on track. Now, this particular M3 has had a few minor upgrades. If you want to see the exact list of upgrades, check out our website at grassrootsmotorsports.com. Go to Project Cars, and you will see the entire build history. On track, it was actually really, really impressive to drive. Now, I had just come off of testing the brand new BMW M2, and 100% you could feel the DNA of this E46 in the M2, and you could feel uh, the, the heritage of this M2 being reflected backwards to this E46 M3. Now, if you've ever driven a BMW, you're familiar with the tendencies um, of that semi-trailing arm rear suspension. It does give you a little bit to think about on track. It is, uh, it is something that can lend itself to a little bit of sketchiness, particularly on throttle at the limit. So you do have to take a little bit of a moment for the thing to settle into a corner, uh, whether that be the front end taking a little bit of time to catch up and find grip, or once you get back on the throttle, the rear end taking some time to set itself and be able to change, change chassis attitude by using the throttle. But once you take that little pause, once you let the chassis and those uh, rear semi-trailing arms kind of catch up with everything, you are rewarded with a very controllable car. I totally get why there are so many drift cars being built out of um, semi-trailing arm BMWs because it is a fantastically easy and fun car to control with the throttle at the limit. And it feels like a thoroughly modern car. Now maybe the limits aren't quite as high as they are on a new BMW. Maybe uh, the engine, despite being you know, uh, over 300 horsepower, um, maybe it doesn't feel quite as fast as the 450 to 500 horsepower engines of modern BMWs, but everything about this uh, nearly 20 year old M3 at the time we are recording this feels thoroughly modern, thoroughly sophisticated, and driving it, it it's a very, very familiar, very accessible level of performance. But me uh, telling you what the thing is like to drive doesn't tell the whole story. We're going to take a look at the data here. And we actually did a little bit of an interesting comparison when we pulled up some data charts. We found another car in our database, very different car, but a car running a very, very similar time, a 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. Thoroughly modern car, which turned a near identical lap time to our 20 year old M3. Did it in a little bit different way though. So it's going to be interesting to go through the data a bit and see how a modern current uh, in the showroom car versus a 20 year old uh, heritage legend does on track. So let's take a look at the data. So the first thing I see here is uh, in a, more than a few spots, this data is uh, nearly sitting on top of each other, meaning these cars are performing nearly exactly the same, uh, especially on acceleration here from turn um, turn three down to turn four. Now what's interesting is the Elantra is making a shift at this point, it's going from third gear to fourth gear in that DCT transmission, which barely even shows up on the data. The, uh, the Elantra's trace is in red and the uh, BMW's trace is in blue. Uh, the BMW just stays in third gear with that manual transmission. So interesting that both lines overlap at that point. And let's see a spot where they come apart here a little bit, and that is uh, acceleration out of this, uh, this kink of, of turn four down towards turn five. We actually see that the, uh, the M3 got a little bit better run through that kink. This is possibly a rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive situation going on here because we, we see uh, even though the M3 had to slow down a little bit more, probably due to uh, you know not as much rubber on the ground relative to its weight as that Hyundai, um, the M3 was able to get that turn negotiated and get accelerated down the next straight, whereas um, the Elantra needed a little more time in that corner to sort things out and be able to accelerate at full clip. Braking into these areas, it looks good for both cars. We see a very, very small speed advantage mid-corner here uh, through turns five 
and turn six for the Elantra. And when I say very small, I mean, you know, less than two miles an hour, but definitely present, definitely present in both corners, showing that uh, that Hyundai does have some grip and uh, when, when it's able to unleash it, um, does, does a, a, a good job through those squarish corners. Now through the S's, which is mostly really just a bumpy straight, we can see that both cars do very, very well. This is, this is uh, as much as, uh, as anything a test of how good the shock absorbers are on a car. The, the more and deeper you can get into the curbs, uh, at this section of the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park, the more you can maintain momentum through this section. And it takes a good set of shocks to be able to react quick enough that those curbs are not slowing you down more than they have to or making you lose stability more than they have to. And we can see that the, um, the retrofitted Bilsteins on this M3 is helping it keep pace uh, with the um, Elantra N through that entire section. So. Very impressive for a 20 year old car um, uh, with a little bit of, of the benefit of some modern shock design, able to keep right up with a uh, electronically controlled shocks. So here's where we see the BMW-ness starting to creep in and uh, we're probably seeing the 20, 20 more years of engineering development and that is turn in to the turn eight section. This is one of the more difficult turn ins um, at the firm because camber changes a couple of times. So not every car loves to turn into this corner. Some cars take a little bit longer to take a set, particularly with the front end. We can definitely see that with the BMW here. We see that blue line. We had to brake a little bit earlier, brake a little bit more gently and uh, hold the brakes through a much longer trail braking period to get that front end to bite enough to get it turned into that corner. And once we did turn into that corner, uh, we had to turn in at a little bit lower entry speed. Whereas with the Hyundai, with the Red Trace, we just slapped the brakes and hogged it in there and, and kind of let things work themselves out. The BMW took a little bit more touch to properly get in there. So overall, I think what we are seeing here is an old car that has used modern shock absorber technology to make up some of the deficit uh, that it may have experienced between itself and a new car in some critical spots and otherwise doing a great job at keeping up, except uh, really for one or two spots where it's sort of inherent tendency to have some imprecision on, um, on, on turn in and on initial power down in corners, kind of bit it a little bit in that corner. And I think that was the big difference in lap time. Other than that, you are keeping up with a, uh, a modern, very high performance uh, sports sedan with a 20 year old car. In some ways we may have come a, a, a long way in development, but you can still drive a car that's 20 years old just as fast as you can a modern car, have a fantastic time doing it and uh, have this amazing uh, deep and meaningful connection to the history of high performance cars. If we're gonna address pure performance, though, I will say that um, in many cases, you are giving up nothing, whether you are shopping for what is now considered a classic car versus a modern car. There are plenty of modern cars that can uh, turn fantastic lap times, as even some of the, the things that we considered at the time to be absolute hairy cutting edge, um, way out there performance vehicles. I mean, the BMW M3 was one of the fastest cars of its type at the kind and now um, a Hyundai Elantra is capable of running identical lap times. But it's a very different experience. It's, uh, it's, it's a rewarding experience in both cases, but you really have to pin down what are the reasons I am shopping for a car here? Am I shopping for a car to go fast, be fun, be reliable, uh, be cool and be affordable? Might be looking for a more modern car. Am I looking for a car to be a living piece of history that I can still go and have dynamic fun with at the track once in a while while preserving this piece of automotive history? You might be looking on the older end for something. In either case, you're gonna have a great time. And you know what, wait long enough and maybe that Hyundai will be a classic too. But right now, this BMW M3 absolutely undeniably is a classic. 
Folks, if you like the stuff we are doing here on YouTube, I would invite you to do me a favor, go down here, like and subscribe, and check us out on the web at grassrootsmotorsports.com. And we appreciate you stopping by. We will see you next time at the track. Support brands who support Grassroots Motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. To learn more, visit crcindustries.com. Want to see more content like this? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And for more information, visit us online at grassrootsmotorsports.com.